I'm Mary Winter. I'm the photo archivist and curator of maps at the Kentucky Historical Society. And I'm here to talk about a project that's been a lot of fun for us. Uh, it's got many components, many phases, and we'll talk about uh, those various components in this program. Um, it started in the mind of John Gray with Historic Frankfurt. He went before the African American Heritage Commission out of the uh, Kentucky Heritage Council and approached them about funding a project that would focus on African American experience in Frankfort and Franklin County. And the way we wanted to get to that was to invite people to bring in their family photographs and to recall their past and growing up in Frankfort and to uh, copy those photographs, preserve them, make them available, and then produce an exhibit based on that. Um, David Morgan at the Kentucky Heritage Council and Julie Reason Weber were very supportive, and the uh, African American Heritage Commission did fund the project. Uh, they were joined later by the Franklin County Bicentennial Commission, and we want to thank Judge Arnold. Uh, and downtown, the city of Frankfurt also supported the project. And so we, we definitely want to give our thanks to them. Um, it's been a, a project that's relied heavily on volunteers. And uh, first, Dr. Gene Birch in Frankfurt uh, donated a lot of his time and equipment to do the copying for us. We went to. Um, three sites. It started in April of 95, and uh, we started at the um, First Corinthian Baptist Church and moved to the First Baptist Church and finally uh, ended our copy sessions at Kentucky State University. We were truly gratified by the response of the community. Um, I want to turn my focus now to a person who has uh, been instrumental in this whole project. A project like this works only if um, the community is involved. Uh, we can't, as an agency apart, create a project like this that works on its own. It has to have the involvement of the community. And uh, Sheila Mason Burton of Frankfurt um, provided that, uh, that input. And she called upon uh, friends and neighbors in the community, and they responded overwhelmingly, um, and donated a lot of their time to uh, screen the photographs that were brought in, to write down and record all of the identifying information that we could, uh, and also helped us in selecting photos for the exhibit. Um, as we got into the, the project, we realized that uh, although photos say a lot to you, you need more about the experiences, more of the recollections of people to, to really make it meaningful and to make it come alive. So the um, Kentucky Oral History Commission provided funding to do some oral history interviews that would uh, accompany the project. and. Um, we found that this really has made it come alive. Uh, in the exhibit, we selected about 40 images from the over 300 that we gathered. And we took excerpts from oral history interviews that applied to those photographs or, or to some of the, the general feeling in the community that uh, was relevant to the photographs. And that's what... Um, makes it most interesting to me because a lot of times a photograph will uh, be of a group and you don't don't get uh, a real sense of what it was like to to live at that time or to to be a part of that group and then you have a recollection um, there were several pictures brought in uh, relevant to the schools and um, for instance, there's one of um, President Atwood of Kentucky State College with uh, Betty Fletcher, who's dressed as a brownie. Uh, and the, the picture's a nice picture, 
but uh, when we talked to individuals and they recalled uh, President Atwood's capacity to remember every student he ever met over the many years he was president of the university, you start getting a feel for this man and his involvement with the youth in the community. Uh, there are countless pictures in the collection that are illuminated by these recollections. And I really want to take this opportunity to thank the, the individuals who have uh, helped both with the photographs and with the interviews. And in particular, um, Cornelia Calhoun, Mary Clay, Bernice Combs, Maddie Davis, Winona Fletcher, Henrietta Gill, Clara Hogan, Dorothy Jones, Dorothy McGowan, John Sykes, and Barbara White. Uh, these people uh, believed in the project. They donated their time, their effort, uh, helped us in, in selecting the, the 40 photographs for the exhibit, and we are truly indebted. The community is indebted to them all. Um, the Kentucky Historical Society has demonstrated, I think, a, a tremendous commitment to this project as well. It's, in effect, a, a continuation of uh, interest that we've had for decades, really. It began when uh, uh, Dr. Cheney uh, started work on the two-volume history of blacks in Kentucky uh, for the Historical Society. And that was published recently, a few years ago, and has been heralded as a model for the nation. Um, then Jim Wallace has continued by uh, uh, documenting history of the black churches in Frankfurt and has interviewed quite a few people. So it um, came as no surprise to me, really, when our, our director, Jim Clotter, said that uh, um, he, he was very happy for us to be involved in this. And in fact, uh, a quarter of our staff have been involved in this project in one way or another. Um, one way that this uh, project is particularly exciting to me is that it doesn't just stop with the, uh, the copying of the photographs and the mounting of the exhibit. Uh, we found that um, once we have these materials that they really are a spark for further discovery um, at the exhibit opening and, and continuing. Now the exhibit will be open uh, through April 1st of next year, 96. And uh, as people go through the exhibit, they, they have more recollections that are, are um, sparked by what they see. And uh, we, we hope to learn more ourselves as we have the exhibit um, underway because there are, uh, there's so much to learn. Um, we, in fact, are, are still open to receiving photographs. Uh, so if you know of collections that are, are in danger of being lost to us all, or um, uh, have some photos yourself that you would be willing to bring in, uh, we are still copying photographs. We're uh, at the, the old state capitol annex on second floor. Uh, and if you wanted to contact me, we'll, we'll see about copying them. Uh, the oral history component is still underway. It really just began with the exhibit and will go through next year. So again, if you know someone who has uh, recollections that, uh, that, that we want to keep and want to maintain, uh, again, contact us and we'll uh, see what we can do about recording those. Hello, we're here today at the Alumni House at Kentucky State University. And we're in the third and last session of our project to document life, African American life in Frankfurt uh, through the 20th century and, and even earlier. Um, we have a lot of very good volunteers here today from historic Frankfurt as well as the community and they're working uh, with us. We're from the Historical Society, the Kentucky Historical Society and we decided to do this project with Historic Frankfurt because it was long overdue. Uh, Historic Frankfurt applied to the African American Heritage Commission and, and received a grant to get materials to invite people to bring in their photographs and we will copy them on the spot 
and then they can take them home without worrying about them being lost or damaged. They can see their photos the whole time. And the best part about this is that we can talk to the people who know the most about the photographs. And that way we get a lot more information uh, that tells us what it was like to live in Frankfurt uh, in the 30s or the, even the, the 20s. And some less first-hand experiences from even earlier. We've uh, so far found a lot documenting uh, Af African-American education in Frankfurt. Uh, a lot of uh, photographs relevant to the Mayo Underwood School, the old Clinton Street High School, and uh, KSU as well. Of course, KSU had a lot of different names earlier on. It was the Kentucky Normal and Industrial Institute and uh, the Kentucky, I think just Kentucky Institutional State College or Industrial State College, then uh, Kentucky State College and finally Kentucky State University. Um, one of the things that we intend to do probably later this summer is to add an oral history component to this project. Uh, and by doing that, uh, we can learn that much more about what it was like to live here. And based on the photographs, you get a really good idea of what things were like. Then in the fall, we'll mount an exhibit in the old state capitol. And that one will be based on the materials that we gather during this project. So we're really looking forward to uh, all components of this project. Um, a lot of the volunteers are here today uh, talking to the people who bring in their photographs and I think that's as much fun as anything for them is, is reminiscing uh, about uh, activities that are, are they're reminded of in the photographs. Uh, and these people have devoted a lot of their time to uh, getting the information on these photographs and then uh, Dr. Gene Birch, a local dentist, has volunteered a great deal of his time to actually take the photographs for us. Uh, then once he has uh, taken the photos, they go back to the um, Historical Society and there we process the film and make the prints and we will maintain the collection there on a permanent basis where it will be accessible uh, to anyone who's interested in uh, uh, getting a feel for life in Frankfurt for the African-American community. Okay, Jean, which donor are we on now? Uh, donor number 13, I think we're on shot number 10. Okay, so that's what we've done. How many photos now? I think we've shot over about, a, I think maybe 17 rolls of film, maybe 170 photos already. And it looks like we're going to shoot probably 16, 17 rolls a day probably. Are you using a special format for this? We're using a medium format camera, which gives us a negative that's two and a quarter by two and three quarters, so that when we make a contact sheet from that, we'll have a large size negative so we can see the images. And then we're putting a little code down here where it shows us the donor number, mm -hmm. and then this is the project that we're doing, and then this is the number of the photograph from that donor. So, so we can keep straight on the negative who had who brought what and, and exactly. what the identification is exactly so we'll, we'll have that for the history mm -hmm. terrific well um, are you able to keep up with the, uh, the the flow of photos from the volunteers well it, we've got a lot of volunteers today so I don't know if we're going to be able to keep up or not but we, we'll, we'll go until we get it finished John Gray's helping a lot keeping the track because it's hard to keep the photographs and the numbers mm -hmm. and everything straight so mm -hmm. With all the help, we can do it fine. Well, we've processed uh, film from the first two sessions, and it looks like you're doing a good job on it. So far, so good. <laughs> okay, thanks. Thank you, Jean. Thank you. Okay, well, Miss Winters? Yes. This is my mother, Grace. Hi, I'm nice to meet you. Nice, nice to, to know you. you. And my mom and my sister, Marlene uh -huh. Harris Twyman. Marlene Harris Tyler graduated from Kentucky State in 1953, the first mother and daughter graduate. Together. Together, uh-huh. And so I brought a, uh, some pictures over here as it relates to the, the when they graduated, it was June the 3rd, 1953. Uh -huh. And we have that picture there. And we also have a picture of uh, President Atwood, who was president at the time. Yes. And Dean Bradford, there's a building named for Dean Bradford okay. over there. And then we have Mr. Butler, who was the um, 
the superintendent of public instruction uh -huh. at the time, and Etheridge, Mark Etheridge, who was the uh, President, you know, the Courier Journal? Okay. Well, he was a pre the speaker for our commencement mm -hmm. at that time, so we thought we'd bring that one over oh, that's and wonderful. share it with you. And then uh, my mom is a retired school teacher from Shelby County School System in 1974, uh, and she had been teaching, what, for 34 years. And what, Mom? Well, I'm talking Rand County, County first, County for and Shelby County. Uh -huh. I'm retired from Shelby County. And so then we, I wanted uh, really to share some pictures of my father as well. Oh, I wanted to give you a little picture of my dad. Who, oh, wait a minute, did you finish? I don't know anything else you want to know about this. <laughs> we want to get all of that down. And this is my dad. He was a uh, bartender at the Naughty Pine uh, restaurant yes. on East Main Street. Uh -huh. And my sister and I would come through there anytime we got ready uh, to get a sandwich or to haul uh -huh. my dad when we were on our way to and from Mayo Underwood High School. We both okay. graduated from Mayo Underwood. So I thought it was interesting for it this is. picture because of the sandwiches on there. Okay. Hamburgers were a dime and, and bacon and tomato were 15 cents and then ham and eggs were 20 cents and baked ham was 15 cents and goose liver of all things, <laughs> 15 cents and tuna fish and chicken salad and steak sandwich, 15 cents. Oh, that's, and that's what's wonderful about these old pictures. You'll see a lot of little details in the background that tell you so much more than people intended for you to realize from the photograph. That's, that's and the so other true. thing, the, the food was really good. Oh, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> And so my father's name was George Lee Harris, uh -huh. and I want you to know he started out as a pretender, but he also went to the United States Navy. And see, I like this picture because that's a good picture of my father. Uh -huh. And of course, I look like him too. Uh -huh. And and he became what I did was I wanted to bring this uh -huh. document because from being bartender, he went to a Navy cook and training school and he became an official cook. So he was a cook here after he, uh, uh, after the war was mm -hmm. over, 1941. And uh, so then this is a little document that, a little, what they call V-mail. Yes, they had they, the special. Uh, in mm -hmm. 1945, he sent it to my sister Marlene and had a little message in there, and this is the way that it looked. Oh, terrific. Oh, yes, this is all very interesting <laughs> to us. And then he went to the amphibious training base in Little Creek, Virginia, uh -huh. and there's his picture back there with his uh, officers at the time. And then what we wanted to do was to bring this document because mm -hmm. he served with the LSM, LSMMR during the World War II, mm -hmm. uh, and then he was in the South Pacific when the war was over, and he, we have a victory uh, celebration picture. I'm uh, sorry we didn't have these for the World War II exhibit that we oh, did. Oh, I yeah. didn't realize that. And anyway, there was, you know, there's a big, big pretty victory uh, celebration picture. I don't know if I can find it in here or not. But we have a copy of that where he mm -hmm. sent it to us. And so his picture is also in this document. And I wanted to share that. And I wanted to give a little picture about the family mm -hmm. because that's mm -hmm. my mom, my dad, and my sister who is in Detroit, Michigan. Mm -hmm. She's um, a senior librarian at one of the high schools there. Mm -hmm. And she's been there at, in the Detroit system for, what, 34 years. So you still have educators in the family. <laughs> we recall. Yeah, yeah. So the elementary school or junior high, and then of course uh, I wanted to tell a little bit about her, the other daughter, who was Lee Charles Harris, mm -hmm. and I became a nurse, and <laughs> and uh, they have a picture of me in the at the Detroit Health Department uh -huh. on a cover page. You know? Indeed. And so <laughs> with it there. And then what else I wanted to share with you was that business about the church and mm -hmm. the history of the church. We worked together with George Ed Mitchell to get that dedication of our First Baptist Church as a historical uh -huh. marker. And we wanted to share that information with the group. Well, this is a nice, nice so, broad picture of, yes, of the family. So That's just, just what we're looking for. It's a family picture. Just what we're looking for. Thanks very much. Thank you. Yes, on the 50th anniversary, that was which in, was the 83. Uh -huh. And this this will add to the photos that you brought in in last week, yes. or a couple of weeks, uh -huh. yeah. So we'll get these copied, right. and I'll keep this here, so we don't have to wander. Uh, you don't have to write all the names. You've already no, got it done. Yes. That's terrific. And you had a, a a school photograph that you brought back. What was that from? Oh, uh, this is from the new Rosenwald. Uh -huh. uh, this is a picture of the old school. Oh, all right. And um, 
this. Let me see. That was a, looks like a Thanksgiving uh, celebration. Yeah, uh, uh, well, they put bulletin boards up for every holiday. And uh, this was uh, in the kindergarten of uh, the first grade room because they had three grades in each room. Uh -huh. And this was doing an art activity. All right, so now this was? This was the Rosenwald. Okay. Julius Rosenwald. You say that's the newer one, and this and is this the old. And this is the newer one, uh -huh. and this is the old one. Now the old school uh -huh. was called the model school. All right. Now where was that? At, on the site of the this one. Yes. Uh, it was called the model school because it served as a training school for uh -huh. Kentucky State's elementary uh -huh. uh, teachers. Uh huh. So this is the old. And did you bring this one into us? New. Oh, oh, oh no, yes. I just brought yeah. that. Uh huh. Now, and uh, Ms. Dixon, who taught music there, uh -huh. brought this in. And we think this, we, well, we know this is a picture of a program that they had down there. Uh -huh. um, and you say that you, you know a lot of these people, but somehow you didn't get in it? Yeah, most of my classmates uh -huh. after they got out of high school, but these are the county students, and I went to city school. Uh -huh. So in eighth grade, they, we all got together and uh, hit Mayo Underwood. So now he's going to help us name the children in this picture. What are they holding? Oh, well, looks uh -huh. like a piece of <laughs> Well, they look, it look as if they're go. holding uh, flowers. flowers. Hmm. We can decide whether it's a Christmas program or what because we see the stars. Uh -huh. Looks like snowflakes, maybe. Mm -hmm. It looks like holly to me, but I'm not sure. Yeah. But they're wearing white, so I would say that mm -hmm. this is in the spring. Well, well now they oh, would well. put Christmas. They would put white if you want to have a a group mm -hmm. for singing. They would put a white for mm -hmm. like sort of a like coral coral mm -hmm. type yeah. of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, this so, is great. All the old and the new. All right, thank you. Ready? Thank you. Yeah, we try. Yeah, if you were woman, let's go over here. Oh, I understand. Now, was that for a fundraiser? Right. Okay. Were well, these, now, Miss Wright would remember, uh -huh. 1943 kind of predates me. How do you know? I'm sorry. This is a picture of the This is Jack Rob up here. She's identified. So, was this one of his productions? Do you know who put these on? Or that? Ann Wonderwood? Can you tell where that is? Okay, you want to add anything else? I see some of the names are on the first row. Does this look like Professor Brown to you? Kenashanti. Some of these folks have identified. Like this is Mason Harris, who. At least he's Who is not still walking around, <laughs> right? The first row. I guess he's the wide. only. You know, uh, I believe that was at the old school. Uh, the old Mayo Underwood uh, school. James Crick. That's Mayo generally Mayo. where they were held. Where the yes. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. James Crick Johnson. You know anything about this? No. We think it's Mayo Underwood. Yeah, right. Mayo Underwood. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did y'all ever figure Can out you, who this third one was? You familiar I with that? It's a womanless we wedding. Oh. You remember when they used to put those <laughs> kind of productions on? Yeah, kind of had to remember a little of it, but I don't remember too much of it. Is it normal? No. Well, all of these, I think, are boys dressed oh, in drag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to put it mildly. Yeah. The fourth one is. Uh, yeah. This group, this is this is the Clinton Street School, right? Is that that's the Clinton Professor Mayo there? That's Professor Mayo's mm -hmm. principal, 1909 is the mm -hmm. date of this picture. These are not seniors, these must be elementary school. John Franklin. James so now that, stu James that school James was Franklin. back yeah. kind of behind the state office building? Yes, mm -hmm. yes, as I remember. Mm -hmm. James Franklin. These are from uh, Mother name? Mary Ellis, mm -hmm. who sent these. She didn't come today, but she sent these pictures. Oh, you had a meat oh. bucket too. Mother Ellis is what, 93 years old, oh, probably. And this, this is, is a 1918 picture. Entitled World War One, right. oh and then it, she's identified. Okay. Do you think they were getting ready to go off? Cause well, or is that a doctor's kit? I don't believe so. This is Russell Childs. Oh, Russell Childs, I remember him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Mason. George Mason. <laughs> <laughs> I remember okay, him. Uh, mm -hmm. George Mason. Carol That's Chisley. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute. I can't oh, read myself. Oh, Amanda's went blank. Hmm. Uh, what was Now, is that. <laughs> where is that? You think? Oh, here we go. Yeah, she graduated from Minnesota. All right. Drums, little Jack Rob. Okay. Little Marcella Jacobs. Williams. Was it that? Oh, okay, so that's Jack yeah. Rob. Uh -huh. Yeah, it was. Carrie uh -huh. Jacobs. Yeah. Is that Danny? Danny Wayne? Um, Danny Davis. Well, she's named all these folks, so I guess we can get with her and, and get a little bit more detail about. Well, that's another reason why I'll be glad that we'll be copying some like these, because these are getting in such bad shape that um, the new copy will be archival, mm -hmm. and it'll help preserve it. Danny and David won. I would say Danny. George Child. I'm Danny David. This brings back fond memories. Sitting on the curb on a Sunday afternoon, my father and I. He would be proud if he were still around. And I'm thankful for the opportunity to be a witness to this picture. Appreciate it very kindly. Thank you. Uh, she lives in Frankfurt. Uh -huh. This is yours truly. Uh, yeah, that's a pretty uh, lady, isn't it? <laughs> I saw uh, Maribel Brown, who uh -huh. lives in Texas, and uh -huh. Al Williams in Franklin, and Marjorie Robinson, well, Marjorie Davis, she lives in Franklin. And I was a class of 1948. 1948. Uh, from Mayo Underwood. Right. Oh, my. It was in the early years, and you didn't have but three rooms in the school, and you were very close. You know. And you got a good education, that's one thing for sure. You know. And there's not a whole lot I can say about it, but I miss the school. And I remember just about everybody in the photo. This is the famous Samuelite Quartet of Mill Underwood High School. I am the only living survivor in this group. This picture was made in 1937. Well, I'm glad to see this day finally come to pass. It seems like there was several months ago that we were asked to participate in a project to document the African-American experience in Franklin and Franklin County. And what started off on my part is just being writing a letter in support of a grant turned out to be very long weeks of hard work. But it's, it's, it's very satisfying to see all of these people to come out and to remember uh, how it was in Frankfort and Franklin County from way back when on up until the present. And so I'm glad that um, I had the opportunity to participate in this. I have to give a lot of thanks to uh, historic Frankfort and John Gray because this was really their idea. This was their, their idea, but it's our dream. And we've, we've seen their idea come to fruition and we've seen our dream come to fruition. Uh, I'd also have to give a lot of thanks to the experts, professionals here at the Kentucky Historical Society. Jim Wallace, Mary Winter, Kim Smith, Kathy Dreyer, all of them have just been wonderful in, in helping us to recreate these memories that we have here. I also want to uh, thank the members of the African American community who saw fit to come out, bring their pictures, uh, who saw fit to spend three or four weeks uh, screening pictures. I, I can't think of too many people that we asked to be a part of this that didn't agree. And so I, I'm, I'm just satisfied today. And I think there's a lot of satisfaction throughout the African American community. And I think I can speak for the African American community in thanking John Gray and the Kentucky Historical Society and Historic Frankfurt. <laughs>